All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see the prop I phone up here now. Um, it's daily too bright. Um, but here we are in the new workshop. Uh, let me actually turn down this light a bit. I got these big studio lights there one time. But uh, you can control how bright they go. So we'll turn that away down to about half as bright as it was. There we go. That's, that's plenty bright enough. Uh, today we're making a dovetail box. I already have it mostly made. I was flat at it all day long. It's a present for my sister who is having her 21st birthday tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, I've done the four corners. I've got the hinges attached. Um, so what we're going to be doing on this live stream is uh, we're going to screw, or at least going to try to screw this box onto the base. So it's sitting fairly flush as it is. Before I can... Um, Put anything into place i need to give the thing a good scrub with sandpaper then i'll put some danish oil on it and then we'll um yeah we'll just move along fairly swiftly first thing we're going to do anyway is sand this fell up and i'll try to ask a few questions or answer a few questions also if you're watching this live stream on any platform other than youtube under the own rare and youtube channel it's it's a rip off report the account My the no, my sister is twenty. She's twenty now. And she's turning twenty one. Um, where you know I'm. Uh, where did I put that sandpaper? I'm twenty two. So no, I think I'm a. What am I? I'm over a year older than her anyway. A year and a few months. Oh, we have a super chat from Sauce, who says, Like many, I love your stuff. What's my favourite sauce? Um, I wasn't much of a sauce man, to be honest. But I was set up doing a craft demo down at a place called the Marina Market in Cork not so long ago. And there was a crowd across the way from me selling hot sauce. And they were offering free samples, you know. Naturally, I got talking to them and they gave me a free bottle of hot sauce and... It's quite nice to be honest. So yeah, I just it was there was three different levels you could choose from. There was really kind of soft core um, hot sauce, and then if you were, you know, looking for something a bit spicier, there was like medium spicy hot sauce, and then for just the total lunatics, there was like the maximum spicy, which I tried and I don't know, it wasn't really enjoyable to eat that kind of kind of stuff. So I didn't. So we're just using our cloth here now to apply a very gentle coat of um, Danish oil. Let's see there. There we go. What's my profession called? I call it self-unemployment because I, I can't really say I have a job because I don't. I work for myself, but I work. I don't even consider my work work. I'm very, very lucky. I get to wake up every morning and do what I would do in my free time if I did have a job full time for work. So I, at the minute, I, I, I work as a full time dream liver. I know it's it's quarter past eleven on a Friday night. I should be out, but um, no, I I, I went home actually around seven o'clock, but then I just kind of got um, bored, and I drove back down to work. I just I, I love this place. I really do. No one to bother me and just work away on my own stuff. Not that I mind being bothered. The this place is very busy during the day, and it's always nice to have visitors come in, like there was lads who were hanging the gate, they were here earlier. So they came in and we were talking for a while while they were having their lunch. Then Scott, the stonemason, came in for a good while, we were talking. You know, it's nice because you'd, you'd get very lonely if you were down here by yourself the whole time. Hey, hey, we've got Glenn with the super chat as usual. You should put that horse, I should, that horseshoe heart with the box. That's very clever. I will do that. You're a genius. I was going to give it to my mother, but yeah, I'll get something else for her. She deserves more than just a forged horseshoe. Although I don't know, would my sister appreciate it? 
I don't know, I give it to her. If she doesn't like it, we give it to someone else. Thanks again, Glenn. Um, Dylan says, keep up the great work. I most certainly will. Thank you for your super chat. I appreciate it. Hey, we've got a new member. Hello, Larry, who is a level two member. At the minute, there's no perks, so anyone who's subscribing with a membership, uh, you're only there out of support for the channel. So I really do appreciate every single one of you. I think we're up to like 60 members at the minute, which is mad. I don't have a Patreon or anything like that, just because I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe I should look into a Patreon, but no, at the minute I'm, I'm happy out with the YouTube membership program. I don't think it's available in all countries, but, uh, it's in Ireland and America, which is, and England, which is where most of my viewers are from. Uh, Alex Anderson. Hello. How are you keeping? Uh, hello from Winnipeg, Mont Manitoba, Canada. I'm so glad finally to be part of a live session. Your positivity and wholesomeness are refreshing. Well, thank you very much. And you have a little bouncy thing there that says it's your first ever chat. Hey, Ja, you have your 9 by 9 Elm, legend. Will you email me or message me? I um, I was looking for Elm to make for a center hub for a, um, for a wagon wheel or a cartwheel. And this man has found it for me. Thank you very much. We'll see now how much it'll cost me. That's um, funnily enough, though, that you say that. Yesterday, I was stopped at the shop, and a man called Daryl pulled up next to me. He got out of his car, and he walked up to my window. And the first thing he said to me was, I have some tools and an old horse cart for you if you want it. I'd never met this man before in my life, so I was like, great. Um, so we exchanged numbers, and then uh, later that day, I got a WhatsApp message. And it was a picture of all the metal hardware for a wagon, a horse-drawn cart. Like there was the the bands that go around the wheels. There was the springs. Like there was the footrest. Um, so I was. I thought great. Um, now I really need to find my um, my elm to make the center hub of the wheel. Elm doesn't split. It's a superb wood to have as the center hub where all the spokes kind of stick out of. That's our um, stand done anyway. It's going to sit onto the box like this. And then I'll screw it into place. I will be using a power drill, so anyone who's a hand tool supremist, make sure you close your eyes. Or maybe I'll go use a power a hand tool just for the sake of being on a live stream. This might actually be a longer live stream than usual because I think I'm going to keep going until I have this attached on. I'm not just going to stop at the half hour mark. But for now, we're back to the sanding. Sanding is really not a part of woodworking that I enjoy. Um, I don't hate it, but um, you know, it's not something I detest. But it's, uh, it's what I like about hand plane so much, is that you can just drive on, you know, just nice, smooth, clean shavings. I'll never get tired of using a hand plane. Whereas like sanding is just kind of, there's no romance to it, you know, it's just a bit abrasive, you know. Okay, I might be out of luck. I applied a coat of linseed oil to this earlier before I um, before I got around to Danish oiling it, uh, before I sanded out these lines. So I think they're just gonna have to stay. And you know what, it's not the worst thing in the world. What I'm talking about is these little 
little lines here. Do you see them? Um, they're just left over when I was scribing out where the dovetails were going to go. But it just means that uh, this thing was made by hand, you know? So this is what you're going to get when you make things by hand. Evidence that you did, in fact, put a load of time and effort into this. So we'll just go straight ahead and pour on that Danish oil. Yow. Now, I don't know how many coats I'm going to be able to get on before I have to deliver this tomorrow. Um, but uh, I'll get at least three or four. I'm running low on Danish oil. My mother decided she would um, sand down one of the tables at home. So she took my Danish oil off me and she used half the bottle, I'd say. How's Lucy? Yeah, Lucy hasn't really been... She's gone into retirement. She's getting really old now. She's just not cut out for the camera anymore. Uh, but no, ever since we were mo we moved up to this new workshop, um, she, she kind of it's kind of been hard to feature Lucy in the videos. But you know, I'll probably do something around by the house soon and up, and you get a you'll get a nice Lucy update. She's flying it. She's you know she's getting on now. She doesn't get up as quickly when you come home, um, but she's you know she's in flying form. Oh, well, I posted a video on Instagram today of her wagging her tail. So, um, yeah, if anyone wants to go check up on Lucy, you can find her on Instagram where she features prominently on the main story. How are you, Julia? How is Lady, the workshop neighbor? Lady is very good, I was talking to her today. I don't know what could have, like, I've never met a dog so shy and weary of people. Like, she'll absolutely creep up to you. And then when you go to rub her, she'll, like, hunch away from you as if you just tried to swing a punch at her. It's crazy. I've never, never come across it. But, um, you know, I've only, she's only out every few days. But, you know, hopefully I'll get her to warm up to me a bit more. She came up to the door the last two days. That was nice. Jeremiah, how are you? Uh, evening, Owen. It's a pretty box. How is your Friday? You going out to the pub tonight with the other Irish lads? May it chase the woman folk. I don't know about that now. It's it's twenty past eleven. I think I'm going to work here until this box is almost done. I have the lid gluing up, so I'll do that tomorrow. But I'm getting this box made um, for the most part, and then I'm going to go to bed. And then I'm going to get up early tomorrow morning, and I'm going to head straight back down here, work on my door, and... Um, Finish this box, then some point in the afternoon, I'm going to head away to my sister's party and get drunk. So yeah, I'll figure it out. Well, I don't know now about getting drunk. My parents will be there, so I'll have to chillax a bit, you know. Take her handy, as they'd say, as to not make a fool of myself. Or a fool of her in front of all her friends. A fool of myself in front of her friends. There we go. Here. I love oiling. I think if there was a specific, if there was still very specific craft trade still alive, I think a French polisher would be a, a good one for me. I think I'd have lots of fun polishing bits of furniture and shining them up and stuff. But these crafts don't really exist anymore, so now you kind of get to pick whichever one you like and explore as a hobby, which is kind of even more fun. It's all about how you look at it. Man, wood really does look beautiful with a bit of oil on it, doesn't it? Now we got to oil the inside, which hasn't really been finished to as high a standard, but uh, should be fine. Now we'll have a look there. My phones hardly ever last long. I use, I, 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 again, I'm scared to check my screen time because it's probably obscenely high. Because I, you know, I use the excuse that I use my phone for work, but the battery has kind of gotten to the stage where it's kind of starting to not really perform like it should. So I, I reckon I give this phone another four months before I run it over with a steam engine or 
drop it down some sort of planer or just yeah I've uh, every time I break my phone it's more it's usually something interesting either driving it over which, with the steam engine that was the last one before that I think I was out on a curragh when a freak wave came along and water came over the boat and my pocket got a bit wet and then the phone just gave up Drunk Owen wouldn't be funnier or would be funnier, Jeremiah? I don't know. I'll do a drunk live stream. I'll, um, next week we'll do a making a dovetail box, but every time you cut off a piece of wood, you take a shot. And then by the time we get to the last dovetail, it'll be kind of funny. We could all join along. You guys could take a shot. Um, every time I cut a piece of wood, you know. To be like a fun interactive session. I remember when I did <laughs> when I did break my phone with the steam engine. I it was only like a month and a half old. It was the iPhone 13. I think it was like the second newest one at the time. And I was like, all right, this is my job. I'm balling out getting getting a top of the range phone because before that I was kind of a cheapy second hand Android man um, and then I had you know a nice new phone for what, a month and a half before I sent it to its steamy grave uh, now we have an iPhone 11 that I begged off three who are a mobile carrier provider here in Ireland I was like can I please get a new phone and they were like okay if you do a promotional video and I was like deal and yeah that's that's where we are now all right, I think I'm done with my oil for now. I see Glenn back at it again with another super chat. You're too generous, Glenn. Did you say something this time? Can I go up to it? Ah, oh, yeah. When will that video come out about you for mental health? I think in January that's come out, Glenn. And I don't know will it be a very long video either. Um, I think it'll just be 90 seconds. So like this. Oh, God. I'm after pulling a string on my... Um, yeah, I think it's only going to be like 90 seconds long, Glenn. Um, but when it comes out, I'm sure I'll share it on my Instagram, probably. Don't worry. You'll be, you'll be informed. I don't really like watching myself anytime I'm on TV or radio or anything like that. I never, I never listen back over to what it was just because, I don't know, I'm just, I don't, no one likes the sound of their own voice. It's bad enough that I have to listen to myself when I'm editing these videos. Never mind listening to me chat to some interviewer. Here's the, the lid to the, to the box here. We're just heading up here now to get some some bits and some screws. All right, we're going to position our thing very carefully where we want it. And once we're happy, we're always happy, but once we're happier, we're going to head over to the other side of the workshop, find some big clamps. Hello, Earth Turtle Gamer. Who taught you how to do carpentry? Those wonderful men on YouTube. Uh, old men and books. I thought I had bigger clamps somewhere. I had so many clamps earlier. Where did they go? No, that's weird. That's gonna annoy me now to no end. I had so many clamps earlier. Oh, I put them over on my shave horse. There we go. Do I ever make projects and sell them? I have done in the past, but I found it's, um, it's sometimes more trouble than it's worth around the place. Um, but... Oftentimes you wouldn't sell them and fellas would pick them up and they get all dirty and then you put them in the car and they get all dented and it was just, it was, it was hardly worth it by the time you had the materials, the time to make them and then just the hassle of bringing them the whole way around the country. So this year I just upped the price for me to attend a show by 50 quid um, and said I wouldn't be selling and they were like grand 
And yeah, that's just the way it's it's been. I might go back to selling next year, but we'll see. It's more fun when you don't have to feel the pressure of just selling, selling, selling. I don't, yeah, I think it, it makes your experience there and your interaction with other people more authentic. Do you know what I mean? Right, that's pretty good. Now we gotta measure something. So we use this thing here to figure out where the uh, there we go to figure out where our screws need to go in. Who taught me to wood turn? Um, so I, to be honest, no one. I kind of I'm not very good at wood turning. I have the lathe in the back there that I got when I did a Parkside sponsorship one time, but um, I just kind of figured it out myself. So it's it's not exactly very good work I'm doing, but uh, it's fun. I've turned like a knob for a plane handle. What else have I done? I've done knobs for a door. A lot of knobs. So now I have these cigarette or tobacco boxes that are full of old screws. So I'll find one of them. Nah, these aren't the ones we're looking for. These bad boys are the ones we want. They're covered in a nice thin coat of oil. Now I just gotta find a few of them that look alike. Alright, they kinda gotta be a bit long as well. Hmm. Thank you, Joshua, for the super chat. Nope, I don't think there's a single two screws alike in this bunch here, I'm afraid. Whatever am I going to do? I think I used them up on the last dovetail box I made. Alright, we're just getting four that kind of look alike. And that, that'll do. That'll do. Oh, there we go. Five, six. Oh, yeah. I think I paid a fiver for this tin full of vintage screws one time. Mm -hmm. This is in a charity shop. Back when you could get hand tools from charity shops. Is there, oh, is there another super chat of gone in that I missed? Okay, a minute. My hands are all black now. I don't want to ruin the ruin the the lovely white maple on the box with oil stains. One minute. Okay. God bless from Kurama is grumpy. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Sam Turtle says, e evening from Northern Ireland again. Showed my dad you're responding to me, and he was like, wow, son, you're famous. Fair play to him. Tell your father I said hi. <laughs> so, now, roughly, we'll give all of these a... Like a 4.5 inch? It's a bit big. There we go. Look away for that part, guys. I don't have a counter sink, so I'm just going to use a slightly larger thing. This. in reverse. Bit of shen paper then. Then 
Then I gotta traverse the length of the garage to find a screwdriver. Surely I have a screwdriver around here, do I? I'd say not somehow. Right, back off we go on an adventure. There we go. Nope, I know, but uh, I'm tired. I want to go home. It's like nearly midnight, so I'm just gonna get it done with some, uh, some cheat cheat codes. Look, I'm still driving it by hand, so that's... Is that good enough for you, is it? Now we need a screwdriver and a half. I'm pretty sure I have... I do, I have this really cool screwdriver. I don't know what I'm using this thing for. When I have this bad boy lying about the place. This is like a... I think it's a Stanley 27? I don't know. It's a, another tool I bought in a big box of old tools and it ratchets so instead of you going like moving your hand around the screw every time you just get your thing biting okay this one's set to reverse how do I swap her around oops it also does that but we'll get to that later how do I okay yeah so it ratchets like that big long extension thing it did is so you could like pump screws into place but I don't have enough um, the friction is too tight for that at the minute I think I'm gonna have to screw it directly on where the joint is shite that's not good it's after splitting the joint. That's bad. How did I miss that now? Hmm, what am I gonna do there? That might be a problem for tomorrow morning, I reckon. Ah, well, for now, we'll do this one over here. Any time I've ever tried to cut dovetails on camera, or at least live streaming, I've messed them up chronically. So I tend to kind of stay clear of it. Oh God, lads, that's, that's bad. We're after screwing out the side of the box. Maybe I, I do need to park this for tonight. It's too late to be doing this kind of stuff. I'll glue this thing back up, drill my holes with it not connected to the box, and then we'll go again in the morning. I think that's the best thing. We'll spend the remainder of this stream on damage control, I reckon, seeing if we can fix the problems we just made in the last few minutes. Whew, okay. Yeah, maybe fine joinery isn't the most suitable thing to be doing on live streams. Perhaps it's a possibility. Yeah, I wonder if I clamp you back together. So you're after splitting this thing here um, with the screw. Now it's not a split along the grain of the wood, but it's. Um... There we go. We'll just leave that there and hope and pray. Bigger problem is screwing out the side here. We screwed in through here and then out through the side. So I'm gonna see if I can fix that to any any sort of degree. I reckon sandpaper and wood glue and I'm good to go. But uh, we'll see now.
Uh, we don't want to do too much shaping of the back side of that. There's another thing. Alright, bring her up to 2000 grit, or 240 grit even is what we're rocking this fella up to. See if we can find a small drop of uh, oil left to hide our mistakes. Okay, that's relatively, that could just be a natural imperfection in the wood. That's, that's nothing to do with shabby carpentry there. All right, I think I'm just gonna give this thing oil for the remainder of the stream. See, look, that's, that's barely noticeable. That's the thing, when you're doing these projects, it's very easy to get caught up on the very small little details that only you, like you and nobody else in the world would notice. Because you're the, when you're working on something, it's just so easy to be a perfectionist because you want your craft to, to show. Thirty minutes into the stream already. Well, I don't know how much more I'll do now. I'll show you what I messed up earlier. The lid. We'll oil the lid, and then we might call it a night. But this fella needs a bit more oil first. I find the walnut is drinking the oil, but um, the maple not so much. I wonder where that is. I suppose the. The walnut is a much more porous wood. It has a lot more kind of big open fibers running through it. But that's just a, a theory. Olive oil. Can you use olive oil on wood? I've never heard of that now. Maybe that's all linseed oil and Danish oil is. They just slap on different names, quadruple the price and send us on our way. Happy out. Maybe if I try to drill my holes with without the thing, that might work a bit better for me. <sighs> bit of smoke. It's gonna be hot now. That's already drilled, safe and sound. This fella. This is the one we messed up first time, so we're going to see if we can get it right now. I think it'd be nice as well for structural support if I put a hole in the middle. I think we have a new member. Uh, Kai Visser, welcome to the membership program. Thank you for your support. A carpenter's rule here to figure out the halfway mark. My hat pencil that's usually tucked away in here. Does linseed oil not smell? It does smell, it smells lovely. For anyone who doesn't know what linseed oil smells like, um, do you ever see anyone or smell that smell when linoleum, flooring, lino has just been put down? I think they wrap that in linseed oil because that's what it smells like. Can I eat linseed oil? I think 
it's just rapeseed oil, isn't it? So I think in theory, yes, but I definitely wouldn't. There's definitely chemicals that they added to the stuff I use. That's probably bad to be even on my hands, but oh, that's hot. Um, uh, but yeah, no, don't. Don't eat linseed oil. Would be my advice. But you know, you're an adult. Do what you want. Well, I'm assuming you're an adult. Yeah, we always get people's country that people like to comment. How old are you? Comment in your uh, your age, just so I can have an idea as to what age profile actually watches the videos. Because um, YouTube gives me like analytics that say the ages, but uh, I, I don't know if they're like accurate or not. We've, whoa, okay, so a lot of teenagers. So we've got someone as young as 13 and someone as old as 40, 26, 14. Okay, wow. That's 212. Got a real dinosaur in here. Okay, now the chat has just become unreadable. 60, 63. Ooh la la. 19, that's mad. We really have all sorts of ages in here. That's crazy. Okay, Charles is refusing to say his age, so he must be the oldest of all. He's just been embarrassed. He sees all these young 40-something-year-olds in the comment section. He's like, damn, I'm, I'm too old to be here. I'm keeping, keeping my cards to my chest. Just a no well, I don't know now. You can't really say age is just a number. Um, I do need to go to bed, and I want to go to bed, but the work calls my name. So look, I'm I'm going out tomorrow. So like, I you gotta compensate. For anyone looking to start doing woodworking, I wouldn't recommend using a hardwood when you're starting off. The first wood I ever bought to do dovetails with was maple, which is what we're using right now. And I made a right dog's dinner of it. It's a, it's a hard wood, it's very, very unforgiving. If you just use recycled pallets, the soft wood they use in them, whatever kind of timber it was, it seemed to do me grand. Right, I think, I think that's enough oil on this fella for tonight. So we're gonna place him on top of our table which is we have a new table we're working on that right there behind me is a table i built like to edit videos at it's not done yet needs oil and this here is kind of the island table that's going to be just pretty much our beater table i threw it together it cost me like 100 quid all together including the vice and everything just a big sturdy table we can batter in the middle of the workshop so i leave that there and um okay so this is the lid of the box that I that I broke earlier. I was being a bit clumsy with my chisel. So I'm gluing it up at the minute, but um, do you know what? I gave it very little time. So maybe I should go at this now. I definitely shouldn't go at this now. Yeah, no, we'll give this. We'll give this until tomorrow. Otherwise it'll just be a pointless uphill battle. But um, I'll very quickly give you guys an idea what the box will look like. Um, so we had the stand we were working on earlier. So it's going to be sat on top of a maple stand that we broke. Because again, we were being clumsy. And this is going to be the top of it. There we go. So it's, it's not much now and it doesn't look great, I'll be honest. But once you have the... So we have that elm oiled and we have the base on it and it's looking pretty. I'm sure she won't complain. I mean, she might. But, uh, yeah. Where can I get the outfit? I don't know, man. I don't, I don't sell these. I got all my clothes. My dad this morning threw out a load of shirts. So it's, it's a fun morning 
and that's it. He was like, oh, I'm throwing out all these shirts. He's about 20 shirts, just check out. This is one of them. Um, so he's throwing them all out, and, um, and he's like, oh, help yourself to them before they go. I'm like, I will indeed. So now I have like 40 new shirts. Well, they're second hand, but you know what I mean? Like, I think fashion is one of the quickest ways to waste your money. Like, especially modern, like, fast fashion clothing. Like, the only reason they are worth anything is because they've been marketed to you. Marketed to you. Your favourite athletes wear them, so on and so forth. So there's, it's not actually high quality goods. It's just cleverly branded stuff. Um, so yeah, I try not to buy any new clothes. And yeah, charity shops, hand-me-downs from the old fella. And yeah, that's about the extent of where I get my drip from. Yeah, I think it's it's five minutes to midnight. I'm going to answer a few questions and then we call it a rather late night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What happened to my kept falling off so uh i've already lost one of them and the blacksmith who made it was lucky to give me a replacement but now i'm paranoid i'll lose the other one so i'm just kind of i'm keeping it somewhere safe up in my bedroom before i before i lose it for good because it'd be rude to ask again for another one oh uh, well to be fair i didn't ask he offered but, you know. instead we keep a nice little pencil in our hat I'm very well, thank you. Do people tend to think I'm older? People tend to think I'm taller. I don't know about older. A few people have said to me, oh, I thought you'd be taller. I was like, oh, sorry. Now I'm insecure. Um, yeah, I'm five foot 11, which is one inch shy of the glorious six foot. But people always tell me they thought I'd be higher for my videos. This is the kettle I did a bit of a restoring. We got some black polish for it today, so it's looking a bit nicer, I think. It's looking like a real black kettle all the way from, what is it? 1932. My opinion on coleslaw. Uh, I think I had it once like 10 years ago, and that's been the basis of my judgment for ever since. And it wasn't a good review, so yeah. I don't think I'm, I'm the right man to review coleslaw at the moment. Oh, we'll turn off that big light out there anyway. Bam. Throwing our coat in anticipation of home sweet home. Opinion on mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is very good. Like mayonnaise. Big mayo fan. word queer um i don't know if queer and queer are the same word but uh we'd say we'd use it interchangeably to describe something that's a bit unusual i remember i used it once to describe a fro and people were saying that i can't say that yeah it means odd when am i coming to the uk i'll get there eventually um next year probably i'll try to get out there do I like reggae reggae sauce? I've never had it, but I had reggae reggae crisps once and they were they were class. I love them. Never done any wood burning, no. Favourite moment of today. What did we do today? Um I dunno. Going warming my ass by the fire at like six o'clock, just before I had dinner. But I'd rather a bowl of mayonnaise or a bowl of ketchup. I lost a dare once and I yeah, I don't I don't even know, was it a dare? We were out we were out drinking one time anyway, and I, I ended up having to take like a an entire spoon of mayonnaise. And it was kind of disgusting. So yeah, I'd I think I I'd have a spoon of I, I'd rather drink a thing of ketchup than mayonnaise. Is that jumper itchy? No, I have a shirt underneath it. 
Music. Mary Walloper's favourite band. When am I going to the pub? Tomorrow, I'd say. Calumny in. Everyone here can gay crash my sister's 21st birthday. Bring, like, loud, obnoxious speakers and uh, show up really, really drunk. Opinion on cheese. I love cheese. Oh, there we are. Favourite cheese, okay. Um, can I say parmesan? Kind of mount that stuff up on pasta. I like a good old cheddar as well, though. Um, Favourite alcoholic beverage choice? Like a pint of stout. It's a pint of Murphy's, maybe. Scott Murphy. Guy, parm is valid. Yes! I, I, I thought the cheese connoisseurs are going to pick me apart yeah i'm off to bed lads good night and good luck